Hi everyone. Um, in this demonstration, what we're going to do is remind you how to duplicate a page very quickly, um, and then change the content, um, add the food, um, add a bunch of food styles because what we're going to do is the actual menu which is required in this project that you have a menu. Um, we're going to do all the styles, we're going to have different um, selectors uh, in our CSS that we can simply drop onto the title of the food and the description of the food, the price of the food so that they can we can structure them so that they look really good um, stylistically. And I have actually a really good example um, from a previous student project that I want to show you just to show you how you can make your, your um, food look really good. <clears throat> so this project was for Soul Food Meat Company. And first of all, I love these rollovers. <laughs> It's, you know, obviously uh, has a hibachi, you know, a grill where they grill all your noodles and such. Um, and that was a big part of his branding. But if you notice, you know, all of these um, titles are set off with it, their own color and style, and then all the descriptions, and then he's consistent with how he does the prices. Um, and he even has sub menus. So if you want to go straight to the tacos, which I do, you can see that you know it's four nested columns within. Well, there's a section at the top, and then four small sections in the um, some of the other areas. There might be three columns: first a header, and then three columns within this section. <clears throat> so there's a lot of nested things happening here. Okay, but. The important thing is the type looks really beautiful, and this is all actual type. It's not a giant JPEG or anything crazy like that. You should be using actual type because it's much easier to modify and change. And more importantly, it's searchable um, by search engines like Google in a much easier way. So, <clears throat> really nice example right there. I'm going to minimize that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is. We have our, our finished page. We're going to do a food a food page. Um, it's not actually quite finished, but remember, before you duplicate it, have exactly like you want it to look. I still need to make the graphics to swap out the individual beers because I don't like having pint glasses that look exactly the same. I wanted the unique glasses like we saw at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> so before I would actually duplicate this, I would finish that up. But we need um, a food page. So I'm going to take this index. This is my... Oops, make sure I'm actually at my index. <coughs> um, I'm not going to save that one. My index. Make sure we're looking at the right thing before we duplicate it. And then just control click or um, right click and go edit and duplicate. Or it's command D like in every other program in the Mac universe. And then just rename it. <coughs> Whatever I picked my link to be, my link for that, this button right here was food.html. So I need to name this title, this file, food.html. The important other thing about <coughs> making your links, this link, if you look down here at where it actually links to, it links to food HTML. You know, I did that in properties. So I just went ahead and <coughs> put that in properties right here. Food HTML or food HTML. Um, it links to that. It's not, it doesn't specify any folder. So this document has to be on the same level as our index. Right? If one link is pointing to another, they have to be on the same level. You can't nest food.html within another folder, just at the top level of the local root folder is where it should be. If you put it in a folder called um, files or a folder called, you wouldn't use that one, pages, then you would have to specify that it was in a folder called pages within your link. All right. So we have food.html. It's on the same level or index. I'm going to open food. <clears throat> so I already have all the styles for everything. The only thing I don't want, I don't want this piece. I can take out this whole section, section 21, which is, was the idea of home specials, <clears throat> and insert a different sections. <clears throat> and I want two columns for my food. I have one column we're going to do today, which is paste, paste the stuff inside. You know, you'll be able to duplicate that for the other column. But we'll go ahead and make both columns. So <clears throat> I can go to my insert menu. 
I can pick div, I can pick section, you know, either one of those would be appropriate. A div is really what is, you know, a catch-all for all these things. Um, I'll do section just because we know that. I'm going to give this a class because I'm going to have two of them, but I can use the same style to define them both. They're going to have the same width, um, not going to have any heights um, because I'll let the content define the height. Um, they'll all have the same color background and that sort of thing because I want to be consistent. So I'm just going to call it like um, food columns. All right. And I don't actually have to put the period there because when I put new CSS rule, it'll auto populate that with the period. I'm going to put it on my external style sheet. <coughs> it's a class, obviously. Um, I'm going to give it a background color so we can all see it. Change that later. Um, make it a little bit lighter. Um, and then this box size, I want this to be responsive. Type is actually super easy to be responsive. I'm going to make it 35% because there's going to be two columns. And I'm going to give it a top margin of about, that's just a guess. I'm going to say about 2% at the top margin. I'm going to ignore the right and the bottom, just whatever's left on the page. But the left one will be important. I'm going to say 10%. <coughs> All right, because, oops, 35%. And 10% make 45%. I'm going to have two columns. So that's 45 plus 45. That's 90. So that'll leave me another 10% for the right, the right ending part, the very end. So everything should be centered. <laughs> that's the point. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to float these guys because I'm going to have two of them. I need the one to go up next to the other one. All right. So there's the first one. Um, and again, you know, when I start putting content in here, it's going to automatically create the height of that, as you saw there. We'll do that in a second. I need another column, though. So I'm just going to take this whole line and copy it and paste it, because it's going to be the same class. The content in it is going to be different. like so, but here's where we see our this 35%, here's our 10% left margin, here's our other 10% left margin for this column, and then we have no right margins over here, or here, they were zero, that's why this is equally spaced. Now, the only change I might have to make, because I look at this, I say, well, this is clearly gonna need some padding. Remember, padding is part of the width. So if I go and I start to add to some padding <coughs> to these guys, I'm gonna need to subtract that padding percent from this width percent. So if I put on like a 2% padding all around, that would be 2% on each side, which is 4%. So I'd have to make this 31%. But we'll do that. Don't worry. All right. But the important thing is I have my columns. They're all set. It was pretty straightforward. Take a good look at my HTML here. Because um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of some of this type and put in our actual menu stuff. So for that, I have the stuff already typed out in Word. I actually cut and pasted it from a menu from another um, from another website that I like their pub stuff. It was pretty traditional pub food. So I'm going to use this for my one column. <coughs> um, so I'm just going to copy it, come over here, and all this this formatting is going to get stripped out. Put my little cursor there and paste. And you saw it disappeared because there was no content in it, so it didn't have any height there for a minute. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is separate all this stuff because none of this format is gonna, you know, none of this format's gonna actually work. <coughs> and I'm gonna actually hit another return here, and I'm gonna put um, what do you call those things you eat? Uh main course? No, that'd be an Italian restaurant. Uh Courses. I'd have to find good descriptive. I'm gonna call it eats. <laughs> and I'm gonna put a break there. First thing I'm gonna do is just separate everything with a break. Um, it's just br. Remember, this is the easiest thing to type in HTML. So I'm gonna copy this after every break that I want, just so 
all this stuff will be on separate lines. I'm also going to take out all these dot dot dots because that's like really crappy looking um, design. <laughs> that was in the original um, menu that I cut and pasted. So don't be going, oh, they had that in the original. If someone says it looks like crap on your final project, just, you know, you're the designer, take it out. All right, I'll show you what this looks like in one second. I'm just pasting all these breaks. I'm going to put the rest so I can click back up here and you will see that there's a bunch of breaks and everything. And they'll look much better in a minute, as you'll see. Okay. <clears throat> all right, then I would also take out these. I'm not going to go take out all these things. Oopsie. Except, it, you know, here's where I would, if you want to do any quick editing like that, you can put it in design view and then you can literally go in there, put a space, 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 etc. All right, I'm going to take out them out of the first ones and you'll get the idea. All right, you'll see how the typing works later on. <coughs> or, okay, we're ready for some styles. All right, so no problem. This is one of those examples where we're, we're going to need to have spans, right? We're going to need to use our properties inspector to add the class once we actually have the class ready to roll. So, for example, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this page. <clears throat> There's my food columns, by the way, if I need to make any modifications. And you know what? Here's probably the time that I can add a little bit of padding. So if I want to add, you know what? Let's do, let's look at 1%. <clears throat> actually lock this and do 1% everywhere. So that's 1% and 1% is 2%. So if I want to keep this stuff centered, I need to make this 33% now. So that it adds up with wise. <clears throat> so see how it's, everything's equal still? It's because everything adds up to 100%. If you add the margins, the paddings, left and right padding, and the width of both these columns, everything ends up to be 100%. And that padding looks pretty good. Maybe 2%. We'll see. All right, let's go back to making our styles. <clears throat> this is an easy thing. We can just go and say new selector. And it says thinks we want to do food columns, but we don't want to do food columns. But I am going to do all classes. So maybe this class will be um, <clears throat> food headings. I spelled food wrong. Look at Jeff. And maybe my food headings <coughs> have a, most of this is going to be typeface. So let's say they're going to be um, white and they're going to be so G. They're also going to be font style oblique. So they're pretty thick. Um, Font size, we should do, like, this is a good spot for M's. We're going to start with, like, 1M, which, remember, since if I haven't defined the type size on the body, that would be 16 pixels. So that's the default. If I wanted to check, go up to the body and see, show set, and see if I did anything with the type. I did not. So the default font size is 16 pixels. So 1M is 16 pixels. And remember, the beauty of this is because it's a relative number, I can just change my body font size and it will change all my M sizes throughout my page. Okay. So food heading, we have a few things set. All right, let's go ahead and make another one. But, well, no, we'll go ahead and apply this. There's really only pl one place I want to apply this right now. Actually, I want to make this eats. And before we do this, we should put this back in live view. <coughs> I'm going to take eats and we'll select it and go to my properties inspector, properties window. And let's get this over here a little bit. And there's my food heading. It's white type, so it's hard to see, but you can see when I scroll over it. And if I apply that, there's eats. I could also say, I want my food heading. Let's do, add a few more things on this to make sure everything stays cool. Um, instead of putting a width on it, um, I'm going to set 
the um, the display to block. That way, if there was anything over here, it would get kicked to the next line automatically. Block just means it takes up the whole width of its parent. All right, and you saw it also put some space under there, um, which I wanted anyway. But I can also, under block, do um, some sort of height if I want. If I wanted to now describe a height, I could. You can see my type moving down under it. All right, so block lets me give it a height. Let's just do 10 pixels because that's an easy number. And yes, I'm using pixels for the heights in this because it's the parent that we were worrying about for the responsive thing. Okay, that's easy, right? So all I have to do really is go through here and make different selectors for the different. So I have food headings. I'm gonna have one called food, food um, items. And my food items should probably be a little bit smaller. I'm gonna keep them, you know what, let's make them, let's keep them, well, just so you can see the difference, we'll make them a lighter gray. And um, we'll stick with the Soji. Um, the font size, we'll use 0.8M to start with, and we'll see how that works. And text align left, and we can give it a line height if we want, but I think we'll keep that off. All right, let's just go ahead and apply it. We can give that a height too, and a width as well. You'll see why in a minute. But let's go ahead and apply the, the, the class to it. So it's garlic fries, and we will say we want that to be food heading. No, wait, what was it I called it? Food item. There it is, right there. It's sort of hard to see the white, that kind of sucks. So you can see the food, obviously this is gonna be smaller too because we gotta do the price next. Maybe we we'll want it to be 0.9 M's. Actually, let's do that. <clears throat> and I want a little space after it and some kind of designation after here. So let's go to the width and I'm gonna put that in pixels and make the width bigger. And to make this width work, you can see nothing's actually happening right now, but I'm, you have, so to make that work, we actually have to go back to our display and pick out a more appropriate display, um, like inline block. And if you pick inline block, it won't set this whole thing to one single block, but it lets you actually have a, a width and a height. In fact, I'm gonna put a background color on here just for a minute, just so you can see what it's doing. <clears throat> okay, there's a background color for my food items, which in this case is garlic fries. Um, and Actually, you know what, let's put another one on too. So chips and salsa is another item. So I'm gonna add my food item to that. Actually, it looks, when I have the red on there. <clears throat> clearly needs to be wider because my width is not near long enough for, there we go. That way we can have all this, also keep all the, the um, prices in a nice column once we take this off. And you know what else would be cool? is if perhaps there was like a little white line right here, because that red bar is gonna be gone, we can do that with the border. We can put a border on one side, like this side. We can say the border will be um, a pixel bit width of like three pixels, and the style will be solid, and the color will be white. So you see that big fat white border there? See, now I can take off my width thing. But my width is working now by the way, as you see, because I've set this again to inline block. All right, so now all I have to do to format all this stuff is go to each item. So I would just do this all this at the same time. I'm gonna keep that red background on while I do this just because it makes it easier to see my items. 
All right, so the beauty of this is now they're all the same, same class. If I decide I make, wanna make a change to my class, like take this red background off, I can, or more importantly, I think I need this to be white. It's gonna help when I have a background for this that's not, not green, it's gonna end up being gray. In fact, you know what? Let's make that gray now because that is what it wants. It's gonna be gray. I'm gonna use RGBA because I want it to be a little bit transparent. Like that. The type's also gonna be white, don't worry. As are the descriptions. Actually, let's do the description next. So before I select this, I should probably just go ahead and make up the description. So now everyone's probably got the idea. And call this um, oopsie. Food description. And for this one, you guessed it. Text align left, color. You know, maybe we'll use like a light tan for this just to mix things up a little bit and see if that works with our color palette. Because it's all very woodsy bar -y. Something like that. And, and the size, we should probably get a little smaller. So we're gonna start with points, point seven. Oops. Okay, let's go ahead and apply it so we can see what it looks like. And then we'll modify it from there. So food description. Heading food description right there. You know what I should also do for food description, just so it's easier for me to see in the um, in the bars. I'm going to give it a yellow background for now, just because it makes it easier to see it right here when I pick it out up from my class. Of course, that's going to obviously change because that looks really awful. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to just change it right now. <laughs> okay. And also food description. Also food description. Okay, so what can I do with this food description? Because I need all these guys to separate. Is under food description, maybe I'll put a little bit of margin. Right? So... My margin, remember, is outside the box. If I start adding a little margin here and I set my food descriptions also, so the margin won't work until I give the display inline block. And then once I have it set to inline block, now that it's acting like a block, then this stuff will start to work. And by this stuff, I mean the margin. All right, so... Yay, oh, I have this weird ad thing. I'm just gonna take that out. I'm not gonna charge him extra for something. Oops, again, I have to go back to design view if I wanna hit delete on my keyboard to make that go away. Obviously, design view, not so good when you're trying to design with CSS. Okay, clearly the last thing I need to do to make this thing all hunky-dory is, let's take these guys out down here. is do something with the prices. So, oh, let's preview this too because I also want to show you guys the beauty of the responsive design. So remember these columns, auto size, and the beauty of that, notice there's no, I'd never put any breaks on, on these lines on purpose because you know, those, those descriptions, you know, if you stopped right here and you're like, oh, I got a widow there or an orphan, you know, that's it's just, yeah, suck, sucky. But for the most part, the type will go ahead and I have to take out with guacamole or I just realized that was where that extra price, I'm not going to charge extra for guacamole, I'm nice. <laughs> of course you want guacamole with your chips. I mean, come on. Okay. Um, because these are responsive columns or percentage the type will automatically reflow. Now, obviously, if it, you know, at this point, 
when things start to get super cramped, we would want to do a media query. That would be a different video though. So this one's getting about as long as I wanted it to be. So we'll jump back to Dreamweaver. Um, make a selector for our, our food um, prices. We'll call it food prices even, <laughs> um, because that's the one thing that's sticking out a little bit. We might want to do a little bit of separation so I can still go back to my like food heading and maybe put a little bit of margin under that to separate. Oops, that's the head. And then the food items, a little margin under that. Just so we have, you know, we don't want anything to look cramped. You know, we can scroll, it's no biggie. All right, so this would be my eats. This column would be my drinks or desserts. Actually, this might be desserts, eats and desserts. Um, there's a whole separate menu for the beer because it's a pub, right? So, all right, on that note, <laughs> I think I have a new plan. I'm going to wrap this up. If you have any questions, you can email. All right, that is all.